Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric, my co-host Mr. Brody here. And we're going to be a, a game to you today from... that we found on our other computer while we were uh, going through some of the games that we had on the other computer. And uh, we saw that we had a game called Dombrov PC Baseball. And uh, something I played a while back. And it's based on the... I guess Sports Illustrated board game as you can see here. So, yeah, Sports Illustrated Baseball game. Um, so yeah, so about the game here. It's a free game to try the uh, trial version. Um, I guess it's 1995 if you want to get the actual game itself. Um, again, but I think the 1995 season include. I mean, 1995 price point is kind of like Digital Diamond Baseball. It includes all the seasons and all the maybe user-made stuff. Um, so I saw there some other seasons with I think it comes with um, the original comes with four seasons and I but I think there's a lot of other free seasons on it, over Seiya. So let's just go through some of the uh, stuff here. So uh, if you go to the bullets here, um, several gameplay options from the original board game mode to the animated computer baseball game with textual play by play results. And I think this was written a few years ago, as you'll see a little bit later on. Uh, in some of these bullets here. Not familiar with the original board game, that's okay. The program will intuitively guide you along. Kind of does, from what I can see. Produces realistic vaults comparable to that of other fine but more expensive board games. Over 70 and growing seasons and growing can be downloaded for free, so it's got a bunch of free seasons, which is cool. Uh, looks like even more than Digital Diamond. Perhaps the best feature is how well it captures the feel you are playing a baseball game. Uh, open game engine allows you to see why certain play happened and modify the game engine. So he has a lot of modification. I saw that as I'll show you later on in the uh, features at the end after we play the game. Okay, use the built-in internet functions to play head-to-head -head against opponents across the nation. Not sure exactly how sophisticated that is. Or you can just play solitaire against computer, which I'll probably end up doing. Uh, built-in support for log me in Hamachi. Not exactly make online player play a breeze I'm not exactly sure what that is extensive support for Laman database so this is kind of cool import teams and entire season or the best seasons of individual players that is cool easily import your own seasons for Laman database and create schedules and lineups from retro sheet data for the board game design and play your your charts from the with the program and export them to Excel for use on your tabletop Okay, again, this is older. I can see this is requires 97 Excel. Don't want to play an entire season? Set up a tournament instead. Or pick your favorite teams for the tourney. That's cool. Intuitive user interface and most functions available with a single click. Uh, manage your favorite team or teams. Let the computer quick play. So it's got a nice AI in it. Robust set of reports. Yes, it does. Including options to colorize and include graphics. Uh, tournaments or leagues. Graphic or game screen, including logos and player images. Now the uh, the newer version, which I think was released sometime earlier, uh, it says Dombrowski 13, but I think it made it updated it a little bit earlier. Um, we added a patch to it uh, earlier this year, 2017, because it does now have the logos and the player images and the ballparks already included, which is really nice. So you don't have to fumble and download any uh, any of that stuff. So it works with Windows Vista and Seven. Or, Seems to work with 10 okay too. Uh, colorful play-by-play -play screen, kind of limited, but you know it's, it says it says what it needs to say. Uh, four original seasons. Again, I think this is in the uh, when you first buy it, you get these four included, and then you have to download the rest of them, which are all free. But it comes with these installed. Uh, highly configurable, including how you want the game engine to run via supplemental rules. That's cool. Add your own image. That's again, these are already included. Sound effects you can modify your sound effects if you want to. Um, options to sort selected players, play with original Sports Illustrated baseball rules, or choose from several supplemental rules that have been provided by the uh, Sports Illustrated baseball gaming community. That's nice. So, chart editor, uh, import schedules, blah blah blah. So, all kinds of different features in here. All right, let's get the game started here to show you. All right. Oops. So it comes on with this 
front of the other screen, so I'm just going to continue it. You can purchase it right here if you want to, but you don't have to. It's got some limited features. Um, in the trial version, but it's unlimited. Uh, you can play it as much as you want. With a, you know. So this right here is kind of your different things that occur in the game. Play a scheduled game here, which is what we're going to do. Uh, play an exhibition game. So right here, you can do an exhibition game. You can select the visitors and visitor with line, team with lineups, substitutions, gameplay. So you can manage certain aspects of the computer if you want to, which is neat. Um, ballpark, you can choose your own ballpark. All the way from the Baker Bowl, that's kind of cool. Uh, so it's got some really old retro ballparks in here too. That'll be interesting to check out. I might do a video just on checking out the old ballparks there. I mean, look at all these ballparks. That is super cool. It's a lot of dead ball ballparks and everything. Uh, Beatles, I think you'll like this one. <laughs> Among others. Huntington Avenue Grounds in Boston. So they go all the way, even different years of the different ballparks. All the way up. Exactly what those up three looks like up to 2011 for the stadiums. So again, um, they, there is a new game under under the works for this game. Um, so that's why I think they're offering it. It's been free for a while, but I think they are they do plan on producing a uh, new version of this game. It's in the works, I think. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to come out, but uh, let's see if you join the internet game here. Just got to put an IP address. Seasons. Gonna look similar to kind of like action PC baseball. You can switch between seasons. Set as the active season, import seasons, kind of like action PC baseball does. Work with leagues or teams. So here you can set up your. Looks like you can set up your own drag and drop the different teams here. If I want to put it over here, if I want to put it back here. So you can set your own divisions and leagues and everything, which is cool. Rename them according to what you want to name them. So blah, 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 you know, whatever you want to call them. That'd be kind of cool doing three leagues. That might be interesting to see. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, that was what I just showed. Team management. So you can go in here and... Uh, some of the different charts and everything. Again, this is from the board game, I believe. And again, I think it's different colors. I'm not sure exactly what the colors mean in this. Maybe uh, uh, possibly fatigue or something, or if or they're hot or not. Different lineups you can choose here. Depth charts, starters, relievers. You can customize your whole team here, which is really interesting looking. Uh, team settings. Yeah, I think this is where you change the text colors and everything. Ballpark editors. Team names you can change. Nicknames, you can change that stuff. You want to make up your own teams. Uh, team images, you can change those. That's cool if you wanted to, but they're all included. Like I said, all included in the game. About the ages and everything, so that's really cool. Um, then you can, these are just links to the Lyman database and everything. Gameplay settings. Different stuff you can set in here. Dice rolls, you can do manual dice rolls. You can do dice roll sounds. So I'll show you when you get to the game started. Savings the box scores either. Move this to text there. Save everything there. Um, team versus team. Kind of just a little stat thing. These are all just different stat stuff. Batting leaders. The leaders. I already played a few games here. Yeah, batting leaders. There's different, all kinds of different, different things in here. Team stats. Three different teams and everything like that, and what's going on.
Injury reports, notable game. This is this is something that was really cool. I think I might, I'm gonna might do this twice, but uh, I think I not twice, but uh, I think I already men mentioned this like, somewhere. But um, I might go over it again at the end of the game too. But different, different, uh, all kinds of different um, stats you can look at right here. You can see what's happening in the league. So that's pretty cool. Lots of lots of stats for the stat addict, which I am. Old websites. Anyway, so let's get into the game here real quick. So anyway, so play schedule games. So, oops, I forgot to do here. I got to set the computer to visiting teams. Computer. Computer, computer, computer. So this is your lineup. So the computer already picked all this stuff, so we just go to the Red Sox lineup and we're gonna go against. Let's see. Here. So here. So all right. Sox lineup. All right. Um. Let's go put your sh see your strum scan. Let's get your strum scan. So you, and we just go right here. Go to the players, and you can just drag and drop them in. I just have to play right field. Sorry, Al. <laughs> For Gom. And I'm splicing this with another video because I actually lost the first part of the video, so it's gonna t it's gonna um, start up again in a second um, where it crashed last time, and I just lost this first part of it, so I had to re-record this. So Cy Young will be pitching, and um, so this is kind of like I'm recording this again after I recorded the first part. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So the, what what you're gonna see follows is the first part. This is after the game was finished. So anyway. Um, so yeah, so let's get the game underway, and we'll splice it with the video right here. Alrighty, and we had to restart the game. I think when I closed the window, I think I might have instead of I closed X out of it, and I think that might have froze up the game. But anyway, uh, so here is your 
lineup for the visiting Chicago White Sox against the Boston Red Sox with Cy Young. <laughs> um, again, not sure exactly what players, if it's a cross era thing or, or what it is. Um, but anyway, yeah, Cy Young. And, and all the pictures are included, like I said, all the logos, the, the fields and everything. And uh, let's get your lineup for the visiting Chicago White Sox is Luis Aparicio. Shortstop bats first. Mini Minoso, the right fielder, bats second. Eddie Collins, second baseman, bats third. Luke Appling is the third baseman, batting cleanup. Bib Falk, the left fielder, bats fifth. And this, this, this is a lineup picked by the computer. Johnny Mostel, the uh, center fielder, bats sixth. Earl Shealy, the first baseman, bats seventh. Sherm Lawler, the catcher, bats eighth. And on the mound, Big Ed Walsh. So, Alright, so Cy Young is on the takes the mound. Again, it's got some stuff around here. Auto outs. These must be board game um, rolls and stuff. So it, it does have very good play-by-play -play from what I could, what I saw last time. You kind of have to follow the play-by-play -play to know what's going on. Um, doesn't... not really... there is some animation in it. Oh, actually. This is cool. You go up to each player. See their picture. So Williams in left. Smith in center, and your strength gain right. Actually, meant to put. Yeah, that's okay. Cronin in, in first baseman. Johnny Pesky is the second baseman. Rico Petroselli, the shortstop. Melzone is the. In fact, Melzone, the third baseman. Cy Young on the hill, and Farrell behind the plate. Not John Farrell. <laughs> So, all right, so all you do basically, and you can use the keyboard or you can use the mouse. I like to use the mouse. Is let's just check here. So I want to see if there's any way. Oh, manual dice rolls, nice. I'm gonna click that. So let's try this with the manual dice rolls. I usually like to have the dice rolls in. I don't know if I want that. Let's just see if that if that means I have to put the dice rolls in. Play sounds, gameplay, instruction banner. I think I might have that. Just to help me out. Let's click everything up and see what happens. Use quick play for computer games now. Alright. All right, let's just try it like this. Save those changes. Let's see what we got here. Oh, lost the scoreboard here. Alright, so click result or alt to the gameplay. Click all buttons as needed. So click one, click result, or plus alt R for the gameplay. Okay. I don't see anything else different here. Alright, let's just try this out here. Oh, manual dice roll. Okay. So let's try this. Click that. Let's just try click result. Let's see. Oh, okay. There they are right there. So these must be board game results here. And again, you don't have to have this stuff on here, but... So these all have to do with the Sports Illustrated game, which I'm not, again, not very familiar with, but... Alright, so let's see what happens. So it's a ground out to short. Ground out number one. I guess I could put in my own dice in here if I wanted to. It's a dice roll result. Keep an eye on these and see how these go. Looks like it, the, the black one is one result and the, it's maybe two white die. See how high that goes up to. So the play result is a G, so they must run off some kind of table or something. So, Alright, so next up, Mini Minoso. Okay, so I don't know if you roll for both of the batter and the pitcher maybe. Okay, so that result is a grounded as pesky. Let's see what the first thing was. Okay, alright. So Eddie Collins up now, number three batter. Again, you can see all their stats for the game, it updates the stats as you go, so that's pretty cool. Um, let me check previous play. Current play. Okay, so, alright, so let's try Eddie Collins up now. Uh, 
that. So it must roll it rolls it twice there. Once for the batter, once for the pitcher, it must be. So it's a fly ball to center. So the play result is an F, so that means it must be fly ball. Alright, so the White Sox go in order in the first, so a big Ed Walsh on the mound. Falk in left, average. Mustel excellent in center. Got a, looks like a plus 10 modifier, but no, so nothing. So he must cover a lot of ground. <laughs> we get Appling. Uh, Baricio, excellent range there, it looks like. Collins, excellent. Shealy, you know, that must be below average there. No modifiers there. And Waller, average. Okay. Alright, so we get Reggie Smith leading it off for the Red Sox. So it's a wild pitch, it looks like. Yeah, Walsh, it must be a wild pitch. So there's nobody on base, so it doesn't matter. So we get a. Uh, don't think it keeps track of the ball and strike count. Let's just be a re pitch there. So it must be a fly ball to left. Spock will make the catch for out number one. Uh, two. No one. <laughs> okay, uh, Johnny Pesky. That means A rating here. Base running ability. Play results to two. Must that means maybe a pop up to second. Oh, a double. No, two must be a double. So two in parentheses. So Johnny Pesky gets a one out double. All right, next up will be Splendid Splinter, Ted Williams. So, runner in scoring position with a one out. What do you think of this game, Mr. Brody, huh? That's what Williams does here. Oh, blue. I wonder if that's a walk. No, it's a strikeout. So, blue must be a strikeout. So, Williams strikes out. Walsh gets a strikeout there. All right, next up, Captain Kali Stremski. That's another strikeout. Wow. So he strikes out Williams and Yastrzemski. To end the inning. So the Red Sox get a double from Pesky, but does not score. And after one full, no score. So Cy Young back on the hill. It'll be Appling, Falk, and Mostel. Be a grounder. Grounder to Mel Zone. Flips over to Cronin. And again, you get a little bit of animation there, just enough to keep things interesting, I think. I think. So, not quite as little, I mean, a little bit more than like Digital Dime, which doesn't have any, but not quite as much as, uh, I don't know, maybe like Action PC Baseball or something. But it's got a little bit of animation, so something a little different. I'm sure if I knew how to play the uh, Sports Illustrated game, I'd probably. Uh, know what was going on here maybe a little bit more so all right so what do we have now we have uh, Bib Falk the left fielder that must be a double he's gonna double got some nice sound effects though so he doubles to center so he went out base runner for the White Sox brings up Johnny Moss still the center fielder Second. One down. That's going to be a grounder. Petroselli over to first. Hawk will move up to third on the play. So two outs and a runner on third now for Earl Shelby, the first baseman. And it's going to be a fly ball to center. So I have to fly out. Smith will make the catch for out number three. So both teams get a double in the inning, but cannot score. Well, in the last last inning. So after one and a half, no score. So it'll be Cronin, Petroselli, and Farrell up for the Red Sox. And 
And that is going to be a ground ball to Aparicio. Throws over to Shelly. So score that a 6-3. So one down in the Red Sox second. We'll bring up Rico Petroselli. And he will strike out. He will strike out. I notice the road does not like the dice rolling there. And that's going to be an E5, so E is an error on Appling. Farrell will reach. So a two-off base runner for the Red Sox. What? You don't like the dice rolling? You think I should get rid of that dice rolling? You don't like that? And this is going to be a fly out to left. And that'll do it for the Red Sox. So after two full, no score. You don't like that dice rolling there, Mr. Brody? What do you think of this game? You're not sure yet? Still checking it out? What do you think? I know, are you not getting much action over there at first? Huh? You, like, you like being the third base coach better? I know, we can't fit you over there, though. See? Uh, maybe we could. Yeah, we'll, we'll put you back at third base, all right? That better? I don't want to put you too much in there. We'll put you over here. There you go. All right. That better? Okay, so top of the third, it will be Waller, Walsh, and Aparicio. So strikeout for Young. First of the game. That'll bring up Ed Walsh. Yellow, what is that? Oh, yellow must mean a walk. So he walks the pitcher. Alright, so we have our first decision here. The computer manager White Sox are attempting a bunt. Click yes to confirm computer manager move. Okay. So they're going to bunt. I don't know if there's a way I can uh, bring in the offense, the defense here. I guess I would have had to call that beforehand. It's going to be a ground ball, and looks like we get the lead runner. So grounds the catcher, and well, not hard enough, and Ballot Farrell is able to throw the runner out at second. So Mini Minoso up now, right fielder. So two down now. Runner on first. That's going to be a ground ball to Petroselli. Goes the short way over to Pesky for out number three. All right, so it's got a nice little functional interface. Very good looking game. You know, it's definitely a, again, I don't know exactly what these modifiers mean or, or the colors mean. Maybe that means they're fresh or something like that. I don't know. It might be a, might be a modifier where they have a good day or a bad day or something like that too. I'll have to look that up and as I play the game. Again, just trying to show you a little, little something different here that we found on our computer that we forgot uh, we had. Alright, so Cy Young up to the plate now, leading off for the Red Sox here in the third, still no score. And that will be a ground ball to Aparicio, throws out to Shelley for out number one. So Young grounds out, top of the order Reggie Smith. And that, looks like that's going to be a double? No, that's a pop out. No, it's a double. <laughs> so I wonder what the difference between the two play result and the two in parentheses. It looks like they're both doubles. Hmm. Must, must be some difference between them. Maybe if there's runners on, it makes a difference. How far the runners go or something. All right, so I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to check this game out. I've been wanting to get some like some of these other retro games like Status Pro and. The Sports Illustrated game just to try them out and get to know their engines a little bit. Might be kind of interesting. So, alright, so we have a runner on second with one down. Pesky up. He doubled his first time up. So we knock the run in. And, oh. Oh, that's interesting. That maybe would have been a double play, possibly if there's a runner on first. I thought I thought they might have doubled him off, but I think Smith is able to get back safely. 
Pesky out on the field is choice. Smith holding at second, so two down now. Take a hit from Ted Williams to get the run home. That'd be nice. And nope, he's gonna ground out to Appling. See if he can beat it out. No. So after three full, no score still. Eddie Collins will lead it off for the White Sox 0 for 1. Oh, it's going to be an error by Petroselli. So E6. It's going to allow Collins to get on, leading off the fourth. So Appling up now. He's probably going to bunt. I don't know if there's a way to position the defense here or not. Imagine there is, I just don't know how to do it. See, I can't bunt. Maybe if I click the bunt for this team, that will position me for the bunt. Okay, attempt sacrifice bunt for the computer. Oh, okay. No. That's not how you do it. Let's see, game settings maybe? Oh, you got a hold of that one. What's happened there? That is a triple for Appling. Ouch. So that was a little different sound for the triple. That'll bring home the run. So, one run will score, and the White Sox take a 1 0 lead on the triple by RBI triple by Appling. Clock up now. And that's going to be a pop up. Cronin. Cronin will make the catch. Oh, Pesky, sorry. No, it's a bouncer, actually. <laughs> so, the ground ball to Pesky. I guess Appling decided to hold. Maybe the infield was playing in. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a sacrifice fly. Stremski has it. Appling will come around the score, the second run. So, sacrifice fly there. Again, I'm not sure exactly what the difference between the parentheses and the non parentheses is. Let's keep an eye on that. Two outs and the base is empty. There'll be a ground ball to Petroselli over to Cronin, and that'll do it with the White Sox plate two. And lead it two to nothing going to the bottom of the fourth. So, it'll be a Stremski, Cronin, and Petroselli up for the Red Sox. Be a fly out to Minoso for out number one. Brings up Joe Cronin. He's 0 for 1. And he will. It's like a fly out to Sheely at first. Fly ball at first. <laughs> Alright, Petroselli up now. Two down and nobody on. One plus, that means maybe they can take extra bases, possibly. Oh, maybe the one plus is like Stratomatic, it means the base runners only advance one base. That could be it. So, two out base runner for the Red Sox. I don't want to try to steal with Petroselli, he's not very fast. Well, Farrell up now. And looks like he's going to single. Petroselli will hold at second. So a little two art rally going for the Red Sox, first and second from Melzone. Melzone's 0 for 1 on the day. And he will fly up to Falk, and that'll end the inning. So after four full, it's the White Sox two and the Red Sox nothing. Wallow so leads it off for the White Sox. Be a ground ball to Petroselli over to Cronin. Out number one. Walsh up now. And 
and that will be a fly ball, uh, ground ball to Pesky. Throws over to Cronin for out number two. Aparicio up now, two down and the base is empty. It's going to be a ground ball to Petroselli, over to Cronin, and that'll do it. So nothing doing for the White Sox in the fifth, and halfway through it's White Sox two and the Red Sox nothing. We want to lift Young. Eh, not yet. We'll let him pitch. It's only 2 nothing. So let me see if I can turn the dice rolling off. I'll just turn the dice roll signs. Try the manual. Alright, let's try that without the sound of the dice rolls there. Alright, so here we go. So, one down in the Red Sox fifth. Right the top of the order, Reggie Smith up now. He's one for two. And he will fly out to uh, Collins. <laughs> Second. So two down now for Johnny Pesky. One for two of the double. And he will hit a ground ball over to Pesky. I mean over to second. So that must be a double play if there's a run on first. Alright, so that's it for the Red Sox in the fifth. So still, they still trail it by two going to the sixth. So, uh, Cy Young back on the field. And strike three, Minoso strikes out. So that's Young's second strike out of the day. Oh, and he gets Collins a strike out too. So back to back K's for Young. Playing now. He tripled his last time. Oh, and that's going to be a go for extra bases. That is going to be a double. So two star must be a, just a double. Again, must have a special modifier in the game. With base runners on, maybe. All right, so two out runner in scoring position for Falk. He's one for two. And that's going to be a single. Let's see if they're going to bring the runner home. Nope, he holds it third. Stromsky throws it back in quickly. So runners at the corners with two down. And that will be a ground ball to Petroselli. Goes the short way. And that'll do it for the White Sox in the sixth. Red Sox need to get something going here. Williams and Stromsky and Cronin. They get the right guys up for this. Uh, he is going to fly to first. <laughs> Pop out first more likely probably. Stremsky up now. And he'll fly out to center for out number two. The Red Sox have managed just four hits on no runs. No runs on four hits and the White Sox two runs on four hits. So Cronin up now. Two outs in the base is empty. And he will fly out to left. And that'll do it. So after a six full, two to nothing, White Sox. Young back out there. It'll probably be his last inning. All right, so computer manager oh, attempting a stolen base. So RR1, whatever that is. <laughs> chance of success, 40, ooh, only a 48% chance. Click yes to confirm the computer move. Otherwise, click no. Hopefully I can... Uh, so yes, if I can throw him out. And, and he's in there safely. So stolen base for Sheely. Two outs, I mean, uh, nobody out in a running scoring position. Hey, Miss Mags, checking out the new game. And ground ball to Pesky over to Cronin. I guess Sheely decided to hold. So one down now. What's up, Mags? Being a good girl? 
Yeah, come check things out here. So, Alright, so one out and runner on second for picture of Walsh. Ooh, I don't know what's happening now. Ah, computer manager here. Let's check this out. I'll bring this over. Picture Ed Walsh is due to bat next. Okay. Okay. So Walsh will strike out. So two down now. It's going to be a ground ball at the short. We're Cronin for out number three. They only play part of the MIDI files there. So, alright, it'll be Petroselli, Farrell, and Mill zone up for the Red Sox. So, everybody gets on the pitcher spot, which will pinch hit for Young, if that's the case. Red Sox need base runners, and it's going to be a ground ball to Collins over to Sheely, out number one. So, Rick Farrell, the catcher, up now, one for two on the day. And he will get a second hit. Pinch run. Let's try pinch running for him. Just to show you how to do that. So I'll go to the lineup. And <sighs> let's see. Again, I'm not really sure the speeds of these guys. Maybe. Yeah, that <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Must be result possibilities or different roles, probably. Well, I'm gonna bring in Jackie Jensen. I'm gonna assume he's a faster runner than uh, than Farrell. So let's bring him in. And now what you got to do is you got to go down in the position and you got to select this as a pinch hitter. I mean a pinch runner. All right. So Jackie Jensen's pinch running for the catcher. A little bit faster, I guess. So Mel zone up, one down. Yeah, I'm not really sure how you do that hit and run here. So this is going to be a ground ball, and that is going to be so they get the lead runner. It looks like Mel zone has reached on the field his choice. So Cy Young, we're going to pinch hit for him definitely now. So let's see, who are we going to bring in? I'm bringing Joe Cronin, I think. Oh, actually, is he playing right now? Hold on. Oh yeah, he's playing right now. Um, Let's bring in Bobby Door. Bobby Door will pinch it for Cy Young. Okay. All right. Red Sox need another base runner. Or home run to do. Ah. All right. So they aren't able to score there. So we got to. We're going to bring in a pitcher for... Some relief pitchers. Uh, I guess we'll bring in Kinder. Cool. Alright, and then we're going to bring in another catcher here. So let's go to the batters. Show by position. Oh, so these are our catchers available. Farrell must be so Sammy White, I guess we gotta bring in. It's our only op option here. Alright, there we go. So White's now catching. Kinder on the mound. So new battery. Ellis Kinder. Vinny Minoso will lead it off. And he's gonna fly out to Stremski for out number one. Eddie Collins up now. One for three. Ah. Well, 
gonna be a single to the right. So Appleham now, he's two for three with a run, RBI and a run scored. I think he hit the triple. Oh, and that is gonna be a wild pitch. So we're gonna move into scoring position. And that will be a grounded to Kinder over to Cronin. He's going to try to steal third, and he'll be in there. Colin steals third. Fock up now. And that'll be a ground in a mill zone over to Cronin. And he gets him. So the White Sox do not add to the elite. It's 2 to nothing going to the bottom of the eighth. So top of the order, Smith will be up. Against Big Ed Walsh still on the mound. He'll ground out the columns for out number one. Pesky up now. One for three with a double. Yeah, I know Miss Max. What's up? What's going on? Oh yeah? He's checking out the new game here. Alright, so... Oh, just a wild pitch. Nobody on base, so re-pitch. And he'll hit a sack or a fly out to Mostil for out number two. Ted Williams up now. Come on, Teddy Ball game. No, oh, he'll ground up to Aparicio. And that'll do it as we head to the ninth. Still 2 nothing. White Sox. That'll be a ground out to Melzone. So, Ellis Kunder is one way out of way for requiring additional day of pitcher rest. Okay, so it's got a rest mechanism in the game. So I guess we gotta. Oops. I don't know if I have any other. I had some other relievers in the last game I played. I thought I had like at least a couple of relievers, but maybe I didn't. Future probabilities. Yeah, I guess I'll just bring in Kyle Mays. All right, Carl Mays is pitching now. That'll be a ground out to a pesky for out number two. Wall out now, and he will ground up the pesky also. All right, so the Red Sox down in the last three outs here. Need a rally. Walsh back on the mound. It'll be Estremsky, Cronin, and Petroselli. Shemsky will ground out to second. Joe Cronin up now. 0 for 3 on the day. Oh, and he gets hit. <laughs> Alright, so a tying run comes to the plate now. Let's see who we got on the bench here. Let's see who else can play third. I mean, uh, Third, uh, blah, 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 short. I have to switch Cronin over, but I think we can still do that as long as we have somebody else to play third. And we. No, because they're all in the game. So we get to switch a couple guys over and then. Playing where? Let's see who's playing where right now. So Pesky's playing second. Shortstop is Petroselli, and Melzone is third base. So shortstop and third base. If we pinch hit. Oh, Cronin, we already. Playing first. Oh yeah, so we need another first baseman. See if we else we have the first baseman. No. I think we can bring in the Oh yeah, we have these guys. So uh, we can do that. Alright, so let's see. Who are we gonna who will it be? We can play a whole bunch. Hmm. Let's compare. 
compare it up to Petroselli. What's Petroselli's stats here? 273. Average. Let's check out everybody here. 273 average. I guess we'll just leave Petra selling. All right, here we go. One down, one on first, and he will fly out. Dappling in short left field. So the Red Sox down in their last out. Sammy White to catcher. We don't have another catcher, so I guess we got to go with him. His first at bat of the day. The Red Sox down in their last out. Let's see what happens. And that will be it as he strikes out. So let's check our we'll put team logos and all that stuff in there. Why not? I think we, I'm saving it under text. So let's uh, let's view the box sheet here. Box score. Oh yeah, so it is a play-by-play. Like I'm -play, uh, not play-by-play, -play, but a scorecard. Um, way of scoring it here. So the pitchers, they do the regular ways. So Cy Young, seven innings pitch, four hits, two walks, four strikeouts, two runs. Actually, let's do the box score. There we go. This is what we wanted. So, wow, yeah, a lot of very detailed. Cy Young gets the loss. Seven he's pitched four hits. Two walks, four strikeouts, two runs scored. Both of them were unearned though. Looks like. Uh, let's see, okay. Committed the errors for the Red Sox. Uh, look so at not look at um, Rico Petroselli. That yeah, they did score both the runs in the same inning. I think that's because of the error by Petroselli. I think if we looked at this, oh score sheet here. So let's look at the score sheet. Um, let's see when this error occurred. So it's yeah, error to lead off the inning. Yeah, because Collins was the guy who got on, and then he scored on the triple. So he that wouldn't have run, and that would have been there. And then that would have been the last out. Yeah, so that both both of those runs were unearned. Okay. And Walsh pitches a gem here. Complete game shutout. Five hits allowed. Four strikeouts. Hitting stars, Appling two for four with a run scored. Collins one for four with a run scored. Appling and Falk with the RBIs. Uh, Falk also two for four. The Red Sox just managed five hits. Two of them by Farrell, the catcher. One by Petroselli and one by Pesky and one by Smith. So Williams, Yastrzemski, and Cronin did an 0 for 11. So that is it. All right, let's, uh, let's see what else we can look at here. Finished. So I think I played a schedule game. I don't know if that's a season game or not. Um, let's see if we'll get this again. So all right, so there's the score there. So let's see if we can automate. Uh, so one game out of 1,296 schedule. Let's do, let's play through, let's play through this game, try to sim these games. Playing more than five quick play requires Dumbra PC Baseball Purchase Edition, okay. So let's just do the first five, then one, two, three, four, five, let's try that. Play through. 
perform, confirm that you want the computer to quick play. Yeah. All right, so manage your decision, attempt to score runner. I don't know why it's asking me for all this stuff. Huh. Yeah, so it's coming up with all these manage your decision things. simming all the games here. So let's just check. I think you double click it, you check the box scores. Oh, that's a notepad. This is what it came up with here. <laughs> uh, yeah. That. Maybe it must be the setting I have it on or something. All right, um, so yeah, so that is it. I just wanted to show you a little bit of uh, Dombrowski baseball here. Let's check the Red Sox one. I can bring that over here. Yeah, this one is saved to Word. I think the other ones it was saving to HTML, but this is the Red Sox box score saved to text here. Not sure if I really like that. Oh yeah, this must be their defense. Okay, yeah, their defense. That's kind of cool. A little hard to read, but that's the regular box score there. So anyway, but yeah, like I said, I think they're uh, they're working to improve this game. Um, do it. They're going to reissue it, I think. I don't know maybe later this year or something. Um, okay, I'll keep an eye on that. If I see anything, I'll post that and uh, probably trying to learn a little bit about the board game a little bit more. Um, just check this out, see what that team chart design editor thing is. Choose season. Let's just go with that Red Sox. Let's choose player. Let's go to see, see what that does. Oh, okay. So this must be, a, you can modify the players. Again, I don't really know much about the actual game, but oh yeah, up here. So I can make them available at different positions and give them ratings according to the board game. So I guess you could kind of essentially create your own player, create your own teams, which is kind of neat. So you may have to Let's just check this generate player chart. Yeah, I don't know to do that. Okay. Team management. So this is team management here. Uh, so these are the things that appear in the games. I can activate and inactivate players, copy lineup, schedule lineup. So I guess there's a, there's a lot of different modification here. Again, I, I, I like to know a little bit more about the game before I start doing anything in here. But I thought I'd show you guys that. Um, Let's see what this is. Create a season from one database. So I guess you can import stuff and then create seasons. Get the link to the database. Let's see what that is. Okay. So I guess you can do stuff with this. Seasons. You must be able to do stuff in here. Oh, yeah, you can, so you can go from season to season, I guess, to active season, kind of like in action PC baseball. Oh, that's cool. You can play an exhibition game to see what the difference here. Oh, yeah, you select the home team, the visitor team, and just play a game there. Hi. Right. Join internet game. Let's check that out. Put in an IP address. Can it, I think it looks like you just put in the host's IP address. So that could be, that might be kind of fun to try out. All right. Um, again, let's just see if I can check the standings out. Check for the sim games. These are the standings. Uh, team versus team. 
So kind of like strat, does stuff like that. Team stats. Let's check out the... Alright, oh, here we go. Red Sox stats here. Batting versus, batting versus righties, batting, pitching stats. Again, I'm not sure exactly how they pick these lineups or, or teams or anything. Might just be, this might, again, this might just be the uh, demo version that does this. You might be able to download the full lineups. Website, notable games and logs. So if you do a thing here with that, I guess you can try different things. Pitching no hitter, one or less hits, complete games, more strikeouts. It's all different kinds of different stuff in here. You can search the database and find out what occurred. That's pretty cool. Or you can select the player game log. So let's just say we went to Yastrzemski. Red Sox. So let's just say Stromsky. So this is game logs in here. Oh, and that'll open up the box scores. Okay, that's cool. And let's just see what I'm trying to think of what other team I sim. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, I played. No, I didn't. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, I saved these under HTML. Must have, yeah. All right, so that is it. So thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming, my co-host, Mr. Brody. So a little Dombrov PC Baseball 13. We'll probably bring another video on it when we figure out a little bit more about the game. Um, so yeah, so looks like it's cool based on the Sports Illustrated board game. I guess from the 70s, I want to say. 60s and 70s possibly um, but yeah something different so that'll be it for now so take care god bless god bless right mr brody and we will see you in the next video so have a good night bye bye now